how to solve equations with fractions. Now, this is part of the solving chapter, algebraic equations. We want to isolate x, get x alone, solve for x, get the answer. But now you see that there are fractions present and immediately some of you are freaking out. Don't freak out. I have a step-by-step -step explanation that's going to help you and it's going to make these super, super easy. Starting off with a basic one, more or less sort of basic. My first step here are my steps. If you follow these steps for all of the equations with fractions, no matter if we're speaking about the more difficult example or the easy example, you cannot go wrong. So first step, write everything as a fraction. Now that is a fraction, that is a fraction, but that is not a fraction. So you first have to write two as a fraction. So how do you write two as a fraction? A whole number can be written as a fraction by putting it over one. 2 over 1 is the same thing as 2. Okay, so we've done step 1, write everything as a fraction. Step 2, put brackets around binomial numerators. It's not applicable in the sum. Remember, a numerator is the top of the fraction. Binomial is two terms. So this has got one term, and that's got one term, and that's got one term. So we don't need to worry about step 2 in this example. Now, the next step is where learners struggle, and that's finding the LCD. In these more simple examples with equations with fractions, finding the LCD is not an issue. It's later on, so later in this playlist, you'll see a few videos later where we have fractions that look like these ones over here, where look at the denominators, finding the LCD is a lot trickier, but we'll get there. I don't want you to stress. But understanding how to find the lowest common denominator is a very important skill in maths. And you need to ask yourself a question. Look at the denominators, the bottoms of the fractions. LCD is lowest common denominator. So you look at the denominators and you need to ask yourself, what is the lowest? What is the smallest number that four, three, and one so all of these numbers can divide into without a remainder, okay? So what is the smallest number that 4, 3, and 1 can divide into? I hope you are thinking 12. If you're thinking that the LCD is 12, you are thinking correctly. So how to check? Can 4 divide into 12? Yes. Can 3 divide into 12? Yes. Can 1 divide into 12? Yes. There isn't a number smaller than that, so that's the lowest one. Now, we need to write or get everything over the low lowest common denominator. So I need each of these three fractions to be written over 12. Now, you need to ask yourself, what must I multiply 4 by to make it 12? I need to multiply 4 by 3. What you do to the bottom of the fraction, you must do to the top. So 4 times 3 gets you 12. X times 3 gets you 3X. Okay, then we do the same thing, but with the next fraction. What must you multiply 3 by to make it 12? You must multiply it by 4. What you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. So x times 4 is 4x. And then do not forget about our last fraction. That's why it's so important to put whole numbers over 1 because you must do the same thing. What must you do to 1? You must multiply it by 12. What you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. So 2 times 12 is 24. Now, all my fractions are rewritten over the lowest common denominator. And because we are solving, we can drop the lowest common denominator. Now, that's not proper math language. What I'm actually doing in order to drop or get rid of the denominator is I'm multiplying all three fractions by 12. When you have equations, what you do to one term, you need to do to all of the terms. But because I'm multiplying them all by the exact same number, I'm not changing the equation, and the 12s end up cancelling. I hope you can see that. So that is essentially what I'm doing. But moving forward, just to keep it simple, I'm going to call it dropping the denominator, dropping the LCD. But I want you to understand mathematically what I'm actually doing. Okay, so what am I left with? 3x minus 4x equals 24. And then you have 3x minus 4x is negative 1x equals 24. This negative x, this is negative 1 multiplied by x. You do the inverse operation. What is the opposite of multiplying by negative 1? Dividing by negative 1. So what is 24 divided by negative 1? I hope you're all shouting negative 24. And that's my first answer. What if I have something like this? Now, I actually copied and pasted this from a past paper. So write everything as a fraction. Now, you may choose to do the following. You can write them as little individual fractions. Or if I have a binomial like this, x plus 1, we can write the entire thing as a fraction. You'll get the same answer. So I'm going to just do the whole binomial, write everything as a fraction, then put brackets around binomial numerators. So binomial means two terms, one, two terms, one, two terms. So in this case, I'm just going to put brackets around. Now, this is definitely not necessary, but it'll help me remember to do things correctly in the following steps. Find the LCD. Now, in this case, I've got two and I've got one. So I hope that you can see and I hope you agree that the LCD in this case is two. 
So you write them both over the LCD. So the first fraction remains unchanged because it's already written over the LCD. This fraction, in order to get one to two, you multiply it by two. What you do to the bottom, you do to the top. Now, that times two, I'm going to pop in the front of my bracket. So I'm multiplying the bracket by two. Do you see what I'm doing there? That's why I said the brackets over here can be helpful. So find the LCD, get everything over the LCD. Remember, what we're technically doing is multiplying both sides of the equation by 2, which is getting rid of the LCD. 3x minus 2, 2x plus 1. And now we solve normally. So remember in our previous videos on linear equations, we said we need to distribute this in. So it's 2 times x, which is 2x, and 2 times 1, which is positive 2. This remains the same. And then we get the x's to the one side, so I need to solve for x. So 3x is going to stay here. This is a plus 2x. I'm adding 2x on the side, so the inverse operation is minus 2x. Okay. Then the plus 2 stays on that side of the equation. The inverse operation of minus 2 is plus 2. I know, again, some teachers say stuff like we're taking it over the equal sign. That is what it looks like is happening on paper, but technically what we're doing is inverse operations. So basically, on this side, I don't want the negative 2 here anymore, so I'm adding 2 on both sides. That's why this, I'm adding 2 on this side, I'm adding 2 on this side, these 2's cancel out, and then I've added 2 on this side. I hope that helps or makes sense. So here I've got 3x minus 2x is x, and 2 plus 2 is 4. Now, I know some of you may have been thinking, but ma'am, there's a way easier way that we can do this. We can cross multiply and we may cross multiply in this case. So this is written as a fraction. This I can write as a fraction. I write it over one. I'm going to write the whole thing over one. And when I say cross multiply, what I mean is you multiply the numerator on this side with the denominator on this side. So basically I'm saying one multiplied by three X minus two. Okay. One multiplied by 3x minus 2, and then I multiply the numerator on the other fraction with the denominator on the other fraction, so 2 multiplied by x plus 1. So cross multiply. We multiply across the equal sign like that. Remember to use brackets if you do that. And also remember, we may only cross multiply if we have one fraction on each side. So in our first example, like this one, we had one two fractions on the left hand side and one fraction on the right hand side so you can't cross multiply you can't cross multiply cannot you could for the second example which i'm doing now because we have one fraction here and one fraction here so here you can cross multiply and in the last one that i'll be doing we cannot cross multiply because i have two fractions on the left hand side and one fraction on the right hand side so we need to have one fraction, only one fraction on each side, and we can only cross multiply if we are solving. So if you see an equal sign. So here, one multiplied by anything is itself. Then two times x is 2x, and two times one is two. And then we get the exact same answer. x is equal to four. Okay, just remember these rules if you want to do cross multiplication. And now the last one. Now this is the most difficult one out of the ones that I've chosen to do with you today. So let's tackle this using my steps. Write everything as a fraction. Everything is written as a fraction. Put brackets around the binomial numerators. So that's a binomial. I'm putting a bracket around it. That's a binomial. I'm putting a bracket around it. This one is a monomial, one term, so I'm leaving it. Find the LCD, lowest common denominator. What is the smallest number that 3, 6, and 2 can go into? I know some of you might be thinking, mm, 12, or maybe you're thinking 18. Or maybe you're thinking something else, okay? 12, 18, those are common numbers that 3, 6, and 2 can go into. They're lowest common multiples. 3 can divide into both of them. So can 6, so can 2. But these are not the lowest common denominators. We're looking for the lowest if possible. So the lowest common denominator is actually 6. Think about it. 3 can divide into 6. 6 can divide into 6. And 2 can divide into 6. So we need to write all the fractions over 6. Every single one of them. What must I multiply this by to make it 6? must multiply it by 2. So what you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. So I multiply the bracket by 2. That's what I do there. Over here, it's already 6. So technically, you're multiplying it by 1. You're multiplying the top by 1. But essentially, it's going to stay the same. Keep the brackets around it. I'll show you why now. This one, you must times by or multiply by 3. What you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. That's just rules with fractions. So 2 times 3 gives you 6. x times 3 is 3x. We got everything over the LCD. 
Now, because we are solving, we can drop the LCD. So these can go away, and what's left is this. And now remember, the mathematical reason why I am allowed to cancel or drop the LCD is because technically I'm multiplying each fraction by 6. And the 6s cancel like that, getting rid of it. Now what you need to do, and this is why I said it is essential to use brackets around the binomials, see, brackets around the binomials, is you need to distribute. So the 2 gets distributed into the first bracket, which I'm sure a lot of you would have known anyway. So 2 times 4x is 8x, 2 times negative 1, negative 2. But where a lot of my students go wrong, so grade 9s, grade 10s, 11s, 12s, is they go wrong because they forget that the negative over here needs to be distributed to the 7x and to the 2. So it's going to be negative 7x and negative 2. See what would have happened if you did not put the brackets around here, around the binomial. You would have said, oh, okay, the, the negative belongs to the 7. So you would have said negative 7x and you would have left the 2 positive. But the negative must be distributed. Please make a note in your book that you are going to forget this. Make a big note somewhere so you don't forget it. Then I need to get the x's to the one side. So I've got 8x here, negative 7x over here. I need to do the inverse operation of plus 3x, which is subtract 3x. Then over here, I want to do the inverse operation of negative 2, which is going to be plus 2. The inverse operation of negative 2, which again is plus 2. So on the left-hand side, I have 8 minus 7 and then minus 3, negative 2x and 2 plus 2 which is positive 4. I'm going to continue over here because I am running out of space as I usually do. So inverse operation of multiply by negative 2 is divide by negative 2. Okay, the number next to the variable goes at the bottom because I'm dividing both sides by negative 2. Divide that side, they cancel. Divide this side by negative 2. 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. And there we go. I hope that this has been helpful for you. Remember to check out the playlist for more equations. I do all the different types. Check out my website, also linked below for algebra resources and other resources. And I can't wait to see you in another video. Subscribe if you haven't. Bye, everyone.